Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who wear in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her consoling breast. Rejoice. Good morning, everybody. So we gather this Sunday to the internet. We bless God for it and for all those people who created it to celebrate the Tire Sunday. As you can see, I'm wearing rose. It's not pink, it's not salmon, it's rose. And it symbolizes a break from our Lenten period, from that period of purification. We take a break from that time. It's like an oasis in the middle of the desert if we are going to difficult times. So it's a Sunday to rejoice in the middle of our Lenten period. Now, one thing that came out of it is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all who are watching. Mothers, grandmothers, great grandmothers, great aunties, aunties, etc. Those who have a role of being a mother to somebody. So it came as a tradition because in the middle of Lent, so in the Victorian and previous era, so during this Letire Sunday, the employees or the servants were allowed to go home to visit their parents, especially their mothers. So that's how the, in consequence, Mother's Day was established for this day. So we have a double celebration. We celebrate the Terry Sunday as the break from our Lenten purification, and we also celebrate Mother's Day to all those who are mothers, who have a role of a mother in their lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather in the house of the Lord. We gather in these times of crisis, scary times, where there's no news that are good news at the moment. We are asked to separate ourselves to do this social distancing to prevent uh, the virus that is going around to spread. But that causes us not to be physically present in the house of the Lord and have Jesus sacramentally. But we take this opportunity to this media to do a spiritual communion because we remember that God has no boundaries. There are no distances for God. So as we are not able to receive the sacramental Jesus in the host, Jesus and God are present in your home, in your lives, and with all your loved ones. And we are to be at our best as we receive this sacramental communion spiritually through this media. So let us acknowledge any time that we may have failed to be kind or charitable or compassionate towards ourselves or towards others, especially now that we have to be surrounded more with people in our homes, with our families or our neighbors. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray, and as we do so, we pray for the intentions of the people in our parish, in our homes, 
in the diocese in the universal church. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards a solemn celebration to come. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now, because we don't have anybody to do the readings for us, so I will proceed to do the first reading, the Psalm and the Gospel. If you have your Bible, you can look it up, or better, if you have a missile or the little magazine that has the daily readings, you can follow through it. Pray and meditate and do our spiritual communion as well with the Word of God. A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. For I have chosen myself a king among his sons. When Samuel arrived, he caught sight of Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed one stands there before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Take no notice of his appearance or the height, for I have rejected him. God does not see as man sees. Man looks at appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesse presented his seven sons to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of us. He asked then to Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? He answered, There is still one left, the youngest. He is out looking after the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not sit down to eat until he comes. Jesse had sent for his son, a boy of fresh complexion, with fine eyes and a pleasant bearing. The Lord said, Come, anoint him, for this is the one. At this Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him where he stood, with his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord ceased on David, and stayed with him from that day on. The Word of the Lord. For the psalm we respond, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and greens are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful water he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil will I fear. You are there with me, you crook and your staff. With this you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You were darkness once, but now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of light, for the effects of the light are seen in complete goodness and right, living in truth. Try to discover what the Lord wants of you, having nothing to do with the futile works of darkness but is exposing them by contrast. The things which are done in secret 
are things that people are ashamed even to speak of. But anything exposed by the light will be illuminated, and anything illuminated turns into light. This is why, why it is said, Wake up from your sleep, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Now we do the acclamation for the gospel. Glory to you, O Christ. You are the Lord of God. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Glory to you, O Christ. You are the Lord of now we have the short form or the longer form. I choose to do the, the long, the short form right now because of the time in here. But later on, you can go and do the longer form. I read it from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Lord be with you. I read it from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. He spat on the ground, made a paste with the spit, put this over the eyes of the blind man, and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, a name that means sent. So the blind man went off and washed himself, and came away with his sight restored. His neighbors and the people who earlier had seen him begging said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, Yes, it is the same one. Others said, No, he only looks like him. The man himself said, I am the man. They brought the man who had been blind to the Pharisees. It had been a Sabbath day when Jesus made the paste that and opened the man's eyes. So when the Pharisees asked him how he had come to see, he said, He put a paste on my eyes, and I washed, and I can see. Then some of the Pharisees said, This man cannot be from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How could a sinner produce signs like this? And there was a disagreement among them. So they spoke to the blind man again. What have you to say about him yourself? Now that he has opened your eyes, he is a prophet, replied the man. Are you trying to teach us? They replied. And you, a sinner, true and true, since you were born. And they drove him away. Jesus heard they had driven him away. And when he found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Sir, the man replied, tell me who he is, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You are looking at him. He is speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe and worship him. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, in the longer version of this Gospel, we see that people are asking, that, you know, this man, this blind man, was blind because he, he, he himself sinned, of his parents' sin, and that's why he was born blind. I think this is very relevant to today because the people in the Gospel, the disciples and the Pharisees, they're talking about punishment. That God punished our sins. It's like that idea that we are, God is waiting, watching us all the time, for just waiting for us to cross the line, commit a sin for sins, for God to punish us. And that is very relevant to, today, uh, to today's situation, what is going on with this virus that's going around, because a multitude of people, believers, Christians of all different religions, they're saying that our society is being punished for 
their wickedness for our wickedness, for separating ourselves from God, etc., etc. And yes, there, might has, there has been a period of separation. We have chosen to separate ourselves from God. But I don't really believe, or we don't really believe, that God is so mean that He will send this disease to punish us. Now, a virus is a disease, it's in nature, it's part of the human experience. You know, we have the flu virus, we have the colds that are bacteria. So we live in this world that is filled with bacteria and viruses and things. So sooner or later, that is going to take effect on us. But the beautiful thing is that our body does everything in our power, and that's the power of God, the power of healing. Our body does everything in their power, in our power, to heal us. Like when we cut ourselves, our body immediately fights anything in order to heal that wound, to protect us from bacteria, etc., etc. So that's the power of God. That's the mercy of God. That's the healing and the grace that comes from God. That comes from God. The viruses, the viruses and the bacteria and the illnesses and the diseases, that doesn't come from God. It's part of nature. It's part of what surrounds us. But it's not something that God said, yes, you have been misbehaving, you have separated yourself from me, you have denied me, so I'm going to send you this virus right now. No. It's about the carelessness of people. And, you know, that's what happened. What's the main thing that people are saying right now? Wash your hands. Take care of yourself. You know, be clean in all areas. That's civilized human condition. And that's what we were supposed to do. So why are we being retaught to how to wash our hands? Because it came to a point that we have become very comfortable with the way of life. And that's our consequences. That's the consequences of our actions. So, yes, there is a virus that is affecting thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, and hopefully it's not going to reach millions. But, yes, there is something scary going on. But it's not a punishment from God. It's not something that God, because we sin, we, we, we sin or a parent, our parents sin or our society sin, God is sending us. But it's something that is happening and we are to take responsibility. So the Lord does not punch, but He allows the consequences of our actions to happen. Now He gives us signs and signals and people and commandments and rules and regulations and policies and measures, etc., etc., for us to have a better way of living. But at the end of the day, we are the ones who choose to follow them or not to follow them. Like those kids in Florida. Uh, schools closed, so what's the first thing that they decided to do? They go and party at the beaches, even though people were saying not to because it will spread this virus more and more. And those are the actions that will have consequences but it's not God that is going to punish every single individual young person for their lack of common sense, but it's their own choices and consequences. So like the blind man, he was not punished by God, just a disease, a congenital disease, uh, cataracts, whatever the case was at that time that they didn't know, but it was not a punishment from God. It was just nature taking its course. Because we believe that God is a loving God. He is such a loving God that He's incarnated Himself into the person of Jesus and died on the cross for us. And that's what we have to concentrate on. The sacrifice of God for us to redeem us, to save us, to give us a better uh, lifestyle, a better way of living, a healthier way of living. One way of living that will make us be at our best, that sometimes we reject. So, whatever your beliefs may be, that God is punishing us, 
for God is just allowing this to happen. All we have to do is pray for each other, care for each other, and as Jesus did with the blind man, just what send him to wash himself. Send the man to wash himself in that holy pool at that time. Because as we see, it's that washing away the taste, everything that we don't want in our lives. And that's what we have been doing this Lenten period, washing ourselves from anything that we don't want. And actually, this may be an opportunity to renew our communion with God, not physically, but spiritual, because sometimes we take for granted the things that we have been offered. Like right now, churches are open in most of the dioceses and in most places, but we can, and we can still go and, and pray by ourselves, but we are not allowed to have the gatherings of people in order to celebrate the communion. And the disabled, the housebound, those who are sick are not able to enjoy the gifts of sacramental Jesus in a church. So they have been doing their spiritual communion wherever they can. And hopefully when they receive the Eucharist, when a Eucharistic minister is visit that sometimes people are busy or they're not in the proper list, etc, etc. But yeah, we take for granted these things. So let us commune with them and let us miss that amazing gift that is the Eucharist in our lives. That amazing gift that is the sacrament of Jesus in the host, in the bread and the wine that transforms into the, his body and his blood. So let us miss it. And then when we receive it again, when everything goes back to the new normal that we are going to come through after all this, because we know that this period is going to purify us somehow. So we are going to come out anew out of this crisis. It's amazing that it happened in the period of Lent. So for us to also purify ourselves in that sense. So when we receive Jesus again, physically in the host, we will be able to have that renewed love, renewed grace, renewed mercy and compassion from God. So let us pray for us. Let us pray for those who are suffering. Let us pray for those who are infected. Let us pray for those who are dying, especially those who are dying alone and scared. And let us pray for all those healthcare workers that are given their best in caring for those who are sick, that they may see the person of Jesus, like Mother Teresa used to see in each person that she cared for until they died. That we may be able to understand each other, care for each other, and bring the grace of God to one another. We now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
We now prepare the altar as we commence the sacred part of the Eucharist, where we remember the Last Supper of our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, we will become our spiritual dearly. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you joy, we join these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as it is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, He has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those in slavery to ancient sin to the waters of regeneration, to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing and be sung in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out without end as we are. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Eus Sabaoth, Plenis Unceli Eterna, Gloria Tua, O Sana in Excelsis, Benedictus qui Benedictus, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, 
and enter willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will give it up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our own brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Mercy in us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, let us raise our hands towards heaven as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory be yours now and forever. For Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. So, peace be with you, peace be with you. Adios Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Adios Dei, Ah. Uh -huh. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now we do a spiritual communion. As we cannot receive Jesus physically in the host, in the consecrated host, as it is transformed into the body of Christ, we do a spiritual communion from home. So I ask you to open your minds, your heart, and connect your soul with God as we say, My Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul at this moment. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, physically, come at least spiritually into my heart, into my mind, and to my soul. I embrace you as if you were already here, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may be always pondered in what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we want to wish you a blessed Sunday. I hope you can be able to watch this and be kind and neighborly and send it to others and teach it to others that we are doing the masses and other prayers through this media. Uh, you can watch on the app, the YouTube app, in your phone, in your tablet, or you can go to the website in your PC or your laptop or if you don't have any of those but you have a television uh, the freeview has 
a YouTube uh, app. So you can go to Utility and look for the apps in the preview and then you will find the YouTube app. Click on it, go to search, put Our Lady and All Saints Parish, Catholic Parish, sorry, Our Lady and All Saints Catholic Parish, search and then you will find us. If you have a Google account, you can subscribe. You can open a Google account if you want and subscribe. If not, you can just watch it for free. So there are no requirements. But I mean, the more subscribers we have, so that it will come to a point that we will be able to live stream instead of recording and uploading. So we ask for your help to send it as many as possible. So remember, mobile, tablet, PC, laptop, or free view on your television. Have a lovely Sunday, have a blessed week, be safe, don't go crazy shopping and doing things, and if you go, remember to wear gloves or anything because of the handles of the, of the little cards and things like that. Always wash your hands at all times, don't touch your face too much, and then use hand sanitizer if you have anything, if not just alcohol or anything that will be useful. But especially just keep yourself safe, especially the elderly who are the most precious and vulnerable at this time. So in the name of Father Daniel and myself, we want to be, uh, wish you the best. And happy Mother's Day to all of you who have a role of being a mother to somebody in this world. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Look upon those who walk to you, O oh Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us stay safe in our homes. Let us stay in communion with God and our neighbors and our community and the Pope and our bishops and all the people who are praying for us and doing their best to bring the sacramental spiritual communion to you in all ways that we can. We are here for you, we pray for you, we try our best for you. Have a lost day Sunday, God bless you. And before we finish, we're going to do the Angelus as we are doing the renewal of the Diary of Mary for England. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of death. Amen. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us say the prayer together. For for we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.